So we're just putting off from uh, Kiosk Access in Algonquin. It's our 2022 Ice Out May trip, which is about two and a half for weeks after Ice Out. But it's as close as we could get. So Mike, do you think there's going to be any action on this trip? I think it'll be action time. <laughs> so on this trip, there's three of us. Uh, me and Mike are in the, uh, the old ultralight fiber uh, Kevlar canoe. And Mark's in his uh, pack boat. Oh, see that fish jump? Right, right there. So we're taking on taking off on kiosk. Tonight uh, we're staying on Maple Rapids. So we don't have very far to go today. I'm expecting it to be out of two hours, two and a half hours of travel time maybe. Uh, just a 40 minute paddle on the lake and then a couple more patches. So we're only 20 minutes in, but so far it's, uh, couldn't ask for a better paddle really. I mean, it's not perfect glass, but it's nice. The few clouds giving us shade every now and then because it's a really hot day today. Oh, it's uh, probably way too far away to see anything on this footage, but Mark's got the first fish of the trip. Looks uh, like a decent size too. Looks like a good uh, 14, 16 incher. I have to go see him to see what he got. I mean, you can even, oh shit, my lures, uh... oh, let's go that way, it's fine. So we're just gonna get out of the campsite before our portage here. Uh, gonna fillet that, uh, it was actually a lake trout that uh, Mark caught. He's gonna fillet that trout, put it in some zip locks, and then uh, finish our traveling for the day. Yep, so here's the lake trout Mark caught. What'd you say that is, about uh, 18 inches? Yeah, about that. So the fish is all filleted, put in the ziplock, we're putting everything back in the boats, and start our portage. It turns out we have four portages to get to our campsite. Uh, first one's gonna be a 900. So let's just come up to our first portage. It's uh, already really shallow, so like Mike said, uh, in the summer this must be barely enough water to get through. So doing our first portage, uh, we just adjusted uh, all the straps and the bags and all that stuff. And uh, it's a 900 meters. And uh, then we just have another little paddle on Maple Creek and another portage. First portage went pretty well. The usual uh, first portage of the year, so things have to be adjusted a little bit. And uh, the first uphill, a little more tiring than it should be, but it's pretty easy portage. Also. We're at our second little portage, a little 190 meter, I think it is. Yeah, 190 Maple Creek to Maple Creek. Second portage done. As expected, it was super easy. Uh, I think we have just a tiny bit of creek to paddle here, and then we have another another portage like a 120. Third portage, I think it's a 120. And uh, there's not much to see here. But the rapids are further up. Jim. Gonna go sideways to it, step out, pull the boat over, step back in. Oh, I was gonna, but now we're going the other way, so. Got your ground there. Okay. Right. Yeah. I 
sounds like a good idea. I'll, I'll give him first. Okay. So coming up to probably our last portage of the day, it's a 600 meter, uh, around these really nice uh, falls. So we finished the 600 meter, uh, nothing special about it except for the fact that it's a really hot day, so made it uh, harder than probably it should be. Uh, but the campsite that's here at the end um, is not suitable at all to hammocks. So we're gonna, we have a second site to, to choose from. Just a little paddle up. Hopefully that one's good. I don't predict a very nice campsite though. It's all like conifers, bushes, alders. Very nice. So, Mark says the campsite's at the top of a little hill here, so we're just going to go check it out. Definitely a lot bigger than the last one. I think we got the uh, the fire lit. Tonight's our usual starting the trip off with uh, steaks and mashed potatoes and vegetables, that sort of thing. So we're all set up at camp. Got the uh, bug shelter on this tent pad here that's uh, right next to uh, the, the rapids. And then we got Mike's giant, uh, giant tarp here for his hammock. Behind the fire pit, Mark's set up there. And right along the Portage Trail, just tucked in just enough. Got the amok set up. We're just uh, eating up the lake trout that Mark caught. Uh, cook, already ate one of the fillets, cooked the second one, and then we're gonna throw the steaks on after that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Maybe you can get a sweet hat like Mike. Snapchat. <laughs> so our timing was pretty much perfect. Uh, by the time we were just finishing up eating the steaks, the uh, clouds opened up and uh, now we got real rain coming down. And there's uh, thunder and actually I haven't really noticed much lightning. I mean, obviously there is, but not near us. But uh, yeah, it's a foreign. So it's the morning of day two. Um, I think everybody stayed dry last night. There's uh, rain and thunder showers for most of the evening. Uh, just having uh, the Quaker Oats breakfasts and we're gonna pack everything up and today uh, like I said right now we're on uh, Maple Creek Falls and uh, we just have to get over to Upper Cow Lake uh, tonight that's where we're supposed to camp. So our campsite was near the beginning of the uh, 800 meter portage on Maple Creek so we're starting our morning with uh, an 800 meter portage and I think uh, this portage goes straight into Maple. I haven't even looked at the map yet today. But uh, this is the beginning. So, just finished the uh, 800 meter portage. Um, it's hot and humid again today. Uh, the black flies and the mosquitoes are definitely all out. Uh, it's a little early uh, for, the, for them to already be out in May, but uh, with uh, the last week, I'm not surprised at all. We had like a week of 28, 29 degrees Celsius in the sunshine. So, everything's hatched. So it turns out there's still a 130 meter portage before uh, we reach Maple Lake. Um, and then after that, we're heading across through Rat Trap and everything uh, towards Upper Cowl. So this is uh, what we're portaging around on the 130 to Maple Creek. Probably throw a few lines here, see if I can't catch a rookie. Please criticize my paddling in the comments. <laughs> So we finished paddling uh, Maple Lake. Nothing, uh, nothing to report aside from me getting my uh, trolling lure snagged. 
And uh, now we have a, something like a 300 meter to Rat Trap Lake. So I just checked the map and uh, so today is a day of uh, quite a bit more portages than I remembered. Uh, we're doing a 390, we're about to start a 390. And then we got uh, like a 1550 and somewhere down the line we got a 600, a 1200. Uh, anyway, we got a bunch of portages today. So uh, at least it's not quite as hot as yesterday, but it's still, it's still early. So quick little paddle across Rat Trap Lake. And then we have a 1500 meter to Boggy, where we're probably gonna stop for lunch. Because Boggy sounds like a nice place to stop for lunch. And here's the put in for the Boggy Portage, 1490 meter. So, so far it's just been a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we just stopped for a lunch break at the end of the 1500 meter into Bog Lake and it's a tiny tiny little lake so uh, next portage is about a two minute paddle. So we're about to start the 660 meter to I don't know what lake. Another portage in the books. Um, we got to paddle North Silva Lake through a little narrowing down there and then yeah, it's, was it a 550? 550. Yeah, and then we have a 550 into 3 mile. Uh, the last time we were on 3 mile, the wind on that lake was absolutely insane. And uh, it was a headwind. It was a headwind that we had. Yeah, it was definitely a headwind that we had last time. Doing the same, this, this part of the trip is the same way we went last time. And uh, the winds are, of course, starting to kick up right now. So, so far this morning it hadn't been very windy, but we're getting close to 3 mile and the wind is kicking up. So this funky little shaped tree marks the beginning of the 550 meter portage from North Silva to Fremont. Yeah, yeah, it's fish. Oh, it's big! Pulling, uh, well, G strolling, John strolling. Uh, Three mile. They just hooked up on a big fish. Don't know what it is yet, if it's a laker or maybe a walleye. I thought it was just a snag because of how this constantly it was pulling, but there was some first fish impressions, fish. probably a laker. There we go. Yeah, there's the head chicks. Nah, I think it's a laker. I'm not rushing it. So I don't want my line to snap at this point with my rod bent in half. John reeling in his monster fish. That's we're all waiting. Fish. We're all waiting for the big moment. Oh, fuck yeah. oh yeah. Lake trout. There's a John's giant laker. I'm pretty sure this fucker's too big to eat. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. It's, it's decent size, man. He's like battle scarred and shit. You see that? Yeah. He's, he's lived. There's laker for the three mile. And there's two. And he's swimming away. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he took off. He was, dude. He was hooked in the perfect spot. We're just sitting out taking a break after I fought that uh, that lake trout. I'm pretty sure, me personally, it's the biggest lake trout I've ever caught. Uh, I'm horrible at 
judging weights, but I mean, granted we're near the end of a hot, tiring day. But like just picking them up out of, by the lure out of the water, my arm was shaking, it was so heavy. But uh, anyway, it was definitely a fun fish. And I got the hooks out of him, no problem. He was, like I said, uh, except for two lifts that I did quickly for, for photos. The, he was almost never out of the water and we watched him swim right back down, so. He's good. Hooked another fish on three mile. Much smaller this time. Oh, very small. <laughs> so we're slowly building up courage to start our uh, last portage of the day. It's a 1200 meter into Upper Kawa Lake. Um, we've done it before, but I have absolutely no recollection of it. So we're hoping it's nice and easy because we've had enough for today. And there's like three campsites in Upper Kawa, so we're gonna finish this portage and then uh, see. So we got camp all set up on uh, Upper Kawa Lake. It's a very small little lake. It's got three campsites on it. Um, but they're all kind of, uh, I don't know, they're, they're not great. But uh, anyway, so we got the Hook shelter up in the front if ever we need it. Oh, it's been a really nice night so far. Doesn't look like it's gonna rain or anything. The bugs are pretty bad, but not off. Not the worst. Right now we're rehydrating the spaghetti that Mark dehydrated for us. And uh, the boys are got their hammocks set up here. And I'm up this trail towards the Thunderbox. Basically blocking it off up there. Anyway, so campsite didn't look like much when we arrived, but it's suiting our purposes just fine. So we're all packed up. Uh, pretty uneventful night. It was nice and cold. There was a few little super short showers but uh, the tarps are still all dry so that was nice to be able to pack the things up dry today uh we're going to birchcliff um birchcliff lake tonight it's not a big travel day but the uh, birchcliff is always sort of a bit of an unknown uh if people haven't been through there yet this year so we're back on the water um tiny paddle to a 320 meter portage that brings us to Kawa lake So Kawa Lake is super narrow, uh, the, we just took out where Mark is behind us, and right there is the put in for the thousand meter that we have to do next. Sinclair Lake, another just tiny paddle across the lake. And we have a 500 meter, which takes us to Cochrane, and then we hop on to Birchcliff. Cochrane Lake, which uh, the Birchcliff Creek that we're going to be on is what it dumps into. So we're going to start our little day of creek travel, see how bad the alder situation is. So we're just going to grab some water and some snacks now, and then we hit the creek. The mouth of uh, Birchcliff, so we're about to start our little paddle. Yeah. 
pull the branches and Side of it or through the That's be right behind you. Now it's in the boat behind you. Your hat's in the right behind you. Your left hand behind the seat, you'll feel it. So we stopped at the campsite on Birch Cliff, and it's a really pretty sight up here. But uh, there's also a pretty nice trail. It goes up creek a little bit, and uh, right now we'd rather portage than, than paddle this section, so that's what we're gonna do. So it hasn't just been uh, the alders. I haven't filled most of them because we've been too busy doing them, but there's a lot of downed trees that we have to pull the boats over, a lot of beaver dams. And so it's uh, definitely slow going, but uh, so far so good. We haven't had to cut that many branches or anything. Just have to push our way through them and keep working. Hopefully we fit through this tunnel. It looks much 
better than everything else. <laughs> yeah, that spike catches your life jacket. Just been amazed that this branch is hanging on to Mike's life jacket here. It's been like half an hour as we're crashing through all these alders and it just won't let go. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. So, we're still making our way up the Birch Cliff Creek. Uh, which, this is probably our third little break. For smokes for them, water for me. Uh, but we're, I think we're about half an hour, 40 minutes away from the portage. And uh, so hopefully we'll be on uh, Birchcliff Lake sometime in the next hour and a half to two hours. And we finally reached the portage on Birchcliff Creek. It's a three or 400, I can't remember. So this and about 100 pounds of water is what was inside the canoe on this, after this portion of uh, Birchcliff. And we finally came into the opening of Birchcliff. Very nice sized lake. There's uh, one cabin you can rent here and there's two normal campsites. So we just checked out the two campsites on Birchcliff. The first one is super tiny and just useless for hammocks. And the second one we can't even find a put in for it. I mean there's the front rocks are at a pretty steep angle. Maybe if the water was lower there'd be like a where you could step. I mean, if we had to, we could probably get up there, but we're gonna go uh, over to where the cabin is and see if uh, the, the land around the cabin has some, some amp trees and we'll just... So we're definitely gonna set up at the uh, cabin. Uh, the cabin's not locked, so we're actually gonna use it just to warm up and maybe cook our supper. We're not gonna start a fire or anything in there, but uh, just cause the boys are getting a little hypothermic. And there's plate room behind the cabin for all of our hammocks, so we'll sleep back there. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's the uh, morning uh, after uh, sleeping behind the Birchcliff cabin. Um, like I said, we used the cabin just to sort of, when we, when we arrived, we were all hypothermic and uh, exhausted. So we used the cabin just to change into dry clothes and uh, cook our suppers. And we set up all of our hammocks behind, uh, in the woods behind the cabin. And um, after, right after we were done setting up, uh, setting up all of our stuff, uh, we heard some voices coming through the forest behind the cabin. And uh, it was two guys who actually reserved the cabin who hiked to the lake because they couldn't make it through the, the Birchcliff Creek. Like I said, it took us about six hours, I think, to get through. It was pretty rough. Um, and they sort of started the creek, gave up, and they uh, took uh, you know logging roads and stuff like that. So, um, slept great, but now it's a really cold and windy day, raining, drizzling. And um, the we, we have a mostly portage day. We're going to the Nipissing today. 
finished our tiny paddle on Birch Cliff, which was uh, super cold and windy. Uh, went through a little creek, and now we have a 1,000 meter from Birch Cliff to Calm Lake, which when I checked the map, Calm Lake is a tiny little pond, and uh, we have another one kilometer right after that. So we're starting the uh, one kilometer to McDonald Lake, I think it is. Um, we just brought all our gear up this first little hill to have our snack break. We finally got flat after all that. And uh, now we're gonna start. Traveling continues on a cold rainy day. We're at the put in for the portage to Lauren Harris. It's 150 meters. So we'll skip a jump and we're at the next lake. So we're coming up to the little 20 meter to Laughlin Lake. Um, we'll see if we can skip it and, uh, and more paddling on Laughlin. Yeah. So the water is obviously really high. Didn't even see a ripple in the water. So we made short work of uh, Laughlin Lake, the wind was at our back, so it uh, just flew by. And now we're coming up to a 450 meter to Bard Owl. And I remember this one having a really bad hill at the beginning, uh, that's all I remember about it. So we're coming to the 10 meter portage, it's definitely not skippable. It looks like it's just a peninsula attached to a campsite. So we're going to hop over this and then we've got a tiny paddle and we make our way to the Nipissing River. So in order to make it to the Nipissing we got to do this 1825 Nod Lake to Nipissing River. Uh, I've never done this portage, so I have no idea what it's like. But uh, it's already, it's only like a little, a little past noon so we got the no, we did uh, one portage over, we did a few more lakes, and then we did uh, a three kilometer to get to the Nipissing last time. Uh, it was super flat. So we've made it to the Nipissing. Uh, we have a small little stretch of, uh, of the river to run, then uh, a 300 meter portage or so. Well, our last portage of the day, 380 meter, uh, Ross Creek Junction I think it's called, and uh, we're camping at the end of it. So our traveling part of our day is uh, done, we got everything set up on our campsite. Uh, at uh, I think it's Browse Creek Junction on the Nipsing. Uh, we really have to make the best out of uh, these these campsites that are at the end of portages. Don't typically have a lot of space, so we got our fire pit area here. And the nice thing about this campsite is it's right on uh, some some rapids on the Nipsing, and we've had uh, pretty good luck fishing these. Uh, usually you know, in the evening, in the mornings, but uh, we're definitely going to try that out. 
So we got Mark set up here. Kitchen shelter right along the portage. Mike right behind that and stuffed into the woods. I got uh, my amok set up in a spot that uh, it just barely fits. So I love this campsite. It's one of my favorites in the park. So Mark strikes first at the uh, campsite. He's got himself a brook trout. Very nice. Got a moose across the shore. Uh, unfortunately, this is a GoPro, so I can't really zoom in on him or her. But she's staring right at me. She's gonna reel in my lure here. Guys! Guys, come here. There's a moose across the river. As soon as I moved backwards just to talk to you, she ran away. She was in a sunny spot across the river. So it's uh, morning on the Nipissing River and it's uh, literally freezing. It was uh, either at zero or below, there's some, small, some fine ice on a few of the items I've tried using so far today. But it's absolutely beautiful here. I didn't get it on camera, but uh, first cast after I just had breakfast, and I just pulled a a decent size, about a 10 incher in. Um, I got him to shore and he, as I was about to grab him, he flopped off the hook and went, got himself back in the water. So hopefully uh, there'll be more. First rookie on camera anyway on the on the nipsing for me. Nice little guy. Get this hook off, let my hands get this hook off and let him go. Nice fish, nice little brookie. Again? Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, you're talking about gotcha. Yeah, 
golden orange spoon. Weaver grabber. <laughs> Just got about a four inch uh, rookie on this one. Just a beautiful spot. So we're going to start our day here. We're going to start paddling. A uh, nice little fishing morning for me. Unfortunately, the other two had uh, problems with their line getting uh, tangled a lot. So they kept having to cut and reattach and that sort of thing. But we're going to move on. I hope we find some, uh, some more sauce to fish. Coming up to our first portage of the morning. I think it's a kilometer one. I haven't looked at a map. But uh, yeah, going around these rapids over here. There's a campsite here along the portage. The reward for a 2.7 kilometer portage, fish right at the end. And we're back on the water. Uh, Mark said uh, that we got a good little paddle before the next portage here, so don't know if that means half an hour or an hour. The uh, log jam on the Nipissing. Uh, dude, are you sure we can? It looks like there's almost a path through it now. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there's a path through it now. Oh, um, not quite. Take like one pull over. No portage. So, the big log jam on the Nipissing, you still have to do the little older portage. But it looks like the log jam split into two. So, there's a Another portage, which might have been there before, but I've just never noticed it before, on the other side of the river. And I think it might skip both of them in one go, but we're gonna have to go across and use it now. So we're on the 500 meter portage, 495, I think is the exact number. Staying on the Nipissing. Just ran across a group of guys traveling the same direction as us. Did the usual discuss our various fishing successes and what lures caught what and moving on the end of that 495 another beautiful little brook trout came off. It's got uh, two in a row, but this one uh, spit the hook about five feet from the boat.
So we're coming up to our last portage of the day. Supposedly we have uh, High Falls Reserve, which gives you the choice between three different campsites, two of which are on the portage trail itself. Uh, we prefer to have the third site if it's available. Unfortunately, you have to, you don't know until you get back in your boat and paddle for another minute. Um, and then you might have to come back if it is up quite. So just finished the 1300 meter portage. Like I said, our last portage of the day. Unfortunately, very close to the beginning of it, um, the rivets that hold on the yoke on, our, on my canoe uh, snapped. So the yoke just popped off on one side. Um, so I sent Mark ahead to grab the campsite that we wanted. Me and Mike were gonna carry it sort of over our heads, two man style, so we took all our bags and walked back. On the walk back though, I thought of uh, using the strap that I used to balance the boat and I ran it around the boat itself around the yoke and then reinforced it on one side and now it's strong enough that I can portage with it anyway uh, the thing that worries me is this boat is an old ultralight Kevlar boat and uh, it with the way that we have like we're two big guys and with all our gear the boat twists a lot as it is and the yoke is one of the is the biggest sort of structural piece to the boat. So uh, we're gonna have some, some things to decide tonight. All right, Mark took the, Mark took the time to go. Oh, no, I just missed it. Okay. I pulled an Edgar. In what way? It wasn't in his mouth, it was just like. Oh yeah, you, so, you foul hooked it. Just uh, boiling some water in the, uh, in the fire for supper. Uh, this is our High Falls campsite. It's uh, the third one, uh, that, the last one basically, when you reserve High Falls, you have the choice between three. Uh, we, we really like this campsite before, as you saw, um, we catch fish right from the site. Uh, my hammock's in the back over there, Mike's blocking the path with his giant tarp here. Got the kitchen tent set up, Mark's hanging over the, over the edge here. And uh, later on tonight, I'm going to sort of redo the repair job on the oak, sort of strengthen it up a little bit. And uh, yep, this is our High Falls campsite. So it's uh, morning on High Falls. Um, last night we made the decision that uh, we're gonna basically make our make a straight line as straight as we can back to uh, the truck um, because uh, the trip we had planned um, we were gonna leave the Nipissing, go through a bunch of lakes, move up to Cedar, and then from Cedar back across to Kiosk. And uh, you know, with the boat uh, not being uh, necessarily reliable, um, the strap going uh, underneath it to support the the structure um yeah we don't think it's worth the risk so today we're going to try and make it to about maple lake and then have a short uh, day out tomorrow uh, assuming everything goes well and of course it's raining starting our day off with an 850 meter along the nipissing to the nipissing so this uh, sandy little hill marks the start of the nadine portage Portage I very much dislike going in this direction because there's a whole lot of uphill. But uh, that's where we are, Nipissing to Nadine. from Nadine to Osler. So we just finished the 1850. Uh, we're on Osler Lake. I'm just gonna have a little sausage and cheese break. A pepperoni stick rather and cheese. And then we'll find the next portage. Taking a break hopefully at near the peak anyway of the 700 meter portage. At the beginning of the portage I had to uh, restrap the uh, yoke because I tripped on a branch and fell and the canoe dropped and then the yoke shifted again. So I had to wrench that back down, but we're just 
taking a break. Getting out of the day. So another 30 second paddle and then we have a one kilometer portage, the one that's nicknamed Heart Attack Hill. I think this is the easier direction to do it. Uh, we have a, a real, uh, uphill at the beginning and then it just drops, whereas in the other direction you have a long uphill. So it's still not a fun portage. So I think it's the last hard one of our day. This is the best thing about May trips. No bugs yet. <laughs> Where are we, Mike? In hell. We're in hell? We're in hell. I don't think so. We're just in a bug infested swamp. <laughs> That's not hell. Heart attack hill to another shitty fucking hill to another <laughs> shitty hill to another <laughs> shitty hill. Mike's the optimist of the group. He's what really keeps us going all day long, you know? Makes you, uh, even at your lowest point, he brings you back up. What's funny is I don't remember any of these, and I've done these before. <laughs> I have no recollection. <laughs> anyway, so we're on the 450 now. We just took a a decent break at the end of the that that uh, heart attack hill. And now we're starting a 700 meter. Um, Leaving Scoose Lake, and I think this one takes us to Maple Creek. Uh, so we finally made it to Maple Creek. Um, so we have two portages on this creek before we get to a real lake, which is uh, Erables or Erable. And um, then we see how we feel. We're probably going to keep going to Maple Lake itself, which is another 170 after that. Creek. On the 660 meter portage, uh, I think this one takes us to Arables. Um, so it's the second to last of the day. We have a 170, 170 or 175 after that. So after a really long paddle, full length of uh, the Rabbler Lake. I think we're finally coming up to the portage in the maple. I see a dark hole in the woods. Into maple with a merganser. I wonder what the other one is. Oh, look at the one on the rock. So it was a tougher than average day today. I went going from High Falls on the Nipissing to Maple Lake. Got an absolutely gorgeous campsite. We're staying on the, the one, there's two southern island sites. The, we're on the southernmost one. Um, got plenty of room for everything. And it's just, it's got a beautiful front face rock cliff to fish off of. Hi YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave lots of comments. I love the comments. We uh, I think we got here around 5 30, 6 o'clock, something like that, so we were all very anxious to get in clean clothes, rehydrate our food, and now we're just relaxing. Beautiful campsite. So, last morning of the trip. Just waiting for Mike to finish packing up his bag, and then we're gonna head off. We've got uh, we're just on Maple Lake on the southern end of it, and we gotta make our way uh, back to the truck at kiosk. It's not a very difficult day, I assume, somewhere in the three hour range. Four portages and a little bit of paddling, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, it was unfortunate like that the canoe yoke broke, but the main purpose of this trip was always uh to do birch cliff sort of get that off our bucket list uh, do the do the creek and then see the lake 
and then uh, sort of to go over a bunch of places we've already been before uh, just sort of some of the nice campsites so we've had good fishing luck in May sort of thing so we missed out on a little bit of that but uh, still had a great trip and uh, so on the way out uh, might uh, might troll a little bit for lake trout but uh, that's about it Count to the second portage of the day, uh, 800 meter. Still Maple Creek to Maple Creek. <laughs> we do! A huge one! Look at this side! Someone else's footprint, but I guess they're not as heavy as me. Forest Moraine. That's a good name. There's no nicer reward after a portage than a big helping of Forest Moraine. The fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Bar references are like. 
Oh, God. My hair, as thick as it is, is three times as thick as it should be. <laughs> Just from fucking sweat. Or 190 or 1090? 190. Oh, I thought it was a 1090. No, 190. The next one is a 900. So. Alright, 190 on the Maple Creek. Last portage of the trip. Uh, going back to kiosk, our access point. Uh, nice little encounter at the end of the at the beginning of this portage for us, the end for them. Saw the boys from uh, Knox on Woods. Uh, they're heading in and they're going to Birchcliff too. So, but they're uh, they're going to leave it. So at least they'll have the current on their hands. But you know, I warn them it's going to be uh, several hours to get through that. Means we're all done. <laughs> but the park's been really empty. Uh, what, like considering we went in like when they started allowing reservations, and uh, we figured so with uh, a lot of other people, but did not see many people in the park this year. Which I'm not complaining about. Just uh, found it strange. All right, so this is probably the end of the video. Just finishing this last portage. Opening, coming out here to Kiosk Lake. So we just gotta paddle back to the access point. And that's all she wrote. Had a really good time. Looking forward to the next one.